Travis Stars in the yellow jacket nearest to us, Mick Canan, looking for his fourth guineas. They're lined up and away they go and leaving the stalls. See the Stars not all that well away on the near side. Uh, Ganaras is one of the early leaders. Evasive is allowed to stride forward by Ryan Moore in the blue jacket, uh, in the red jacket, on the blue, in the blue on the near side, Ocean's Minstrel with See the Stars, Black Cat, Finjan, far side, Ukbar, just behind Ganaras, then Master Craftsman, Cityscape towards the centre with Monitor closely, and then Rip Van Winkle, Ashram chases the leaders towards the near side in the blue of Godolphin, Frankie de Tori, towards the rear, Imperial Guest, Pure Poetry is also out the back at this stage, uh, looking towards the far side, Delegator, about halfway through the field, towards the left now, chasing Ukbar in that blue and white striped cap. It's Evasive that shows them the way just, Ocean's Minstrel on the right, Finjan between the pair, then Ganaras further left in his Ukbar from Master Craftsman, Rip Van Winkle in the dark blue jacket, see the stars on the right, chased by Lord Shanakil, cityscape, delegator patiently ridden, then Ashram, pure poetry, monitor closely, see the stars away to the extreme right now, beginning to come with a bit of a run as they head down inside the last two and a half furlongs. An open looking race, evasive, just spearheads them. See the stars now charging on the right. Delegator is unleashed on the left by Spencer. These three battling on from Master Craftsman, Ganaras and Rip Van Winkle. They race towards the final furlong. Delegator and see the stars. Evasive is third, then Ganaras. Rip Van Winkle stays on. Well inside the final furlong. See the stars on the near side for Mick Canan from Delegator. And see the stars wins a fourth guineas for Mick Canan. Delegator second, Rip Van Winkle and Ganaras were fighting it out for third. Rip Van Winkle running on well, but it's gone to the John Ox train, see the stars. A uh, half-brother to the great Galileo, most beautifully bred colt, son of Cape Gross, wins at eight to one here. Mick Canan riding his fourth 2,000 guineas winner. Uh, you could see from a long way out, he was, he was going to... Uh really count and he quickened well in the dip uh, for you know relatively inexperienced horse but you know the, the rising ground would suit him so as far as you know the further the nearest they get to the finish up the little hill at the end would, would was always going to play to his strengths and he really got home well it's set off and running in the 2009 derby and age of aquarius down near the inside was one of the first away gone out has been away smartly a golden sword going very fast in the early stages kite wood is up there as well uh, further back, Fame and Glory sending about fifth from Debussy and then Black Bear Island. But Golden Sword is the early leader from Kitewood up in second. Then in third is Age of Aquarius, his big white face, pink cap on the outside. Gone Aris has taken up fourth, just behind them the white jacket. Followed by See the Stars, Mick Canad settles fifth on the inner, followed by Montaf. Further back in the field then is Fame and Glory Debussy. They're followed by Rip Van Winkle, who's well back with Black Bear Island and Crowded House as they go through the first three first and the leader is Golden Sword by two lengths to Age of Aquarius. The two ain't no Brian uh, pace setters out there, blazing the trail by four lengths to Kitewood. Montaf is up on the outside, see the stars, the yellow jacket. Gone Aris is just behind him. They're followed by Fame and Glory to Bussy, Rip Van Winkle. Then on the inside next, the pink jacket of Black Bear Island from Crowded House. And last is Master of the Horse, who's being waited with by Richard Hughes. As they reach the highest point of the course now, six and a half furlongs left to go on the derby and Golden Sword, the Chester Vars winner, is blazing the trail by two lengths to the Linkfield Derby trial winner, Age of Aquarius. Four or five lengths away is Godolphin's kite would up on the outside. Mick Canan has seen the stars in a beautiful fourth on the rail. Next is Montap, followed then by Fame and Glory, the green jacket of Debussy, the inside. They're followed then by Gorn Aris, the outer in the white jacket. Then Rip Van Winkle is travelling kindly as they race downhill past the five in the derby. Further back in the field, then out wider, uh, is Crowded House, about third last in company with Black Bear Island, and also starting to make some ground now as master of the horse. Coming round Tatlam Corner now, and on the inside, Golden Sword is the leader from its second age of Aquarius. They've gone four links in front of Kitewood. See the stars is travelling very smoothly for Mick Canan. Then behind them, Fame and Glory to Boosie, and further back in the field, battling on then is Rip Van Winkle, and Crowded House taken to the outside. Golden Sword, though, is the one to catch. They race inside the two furlong, and it's Golden Sword clear. Here's See the Stars pulled on for an effort. Down the outside, Fame and Glory. It's sound now, See the Stars, who takes it up with a furlong to go. He goes a length up now, trying hard, Fame and Glory for Golden Sword and Rip Van Winkle. But See the Stars is going to win the Guineas and Derby double. Goes on to win it well, Fame and Glory is second. Tight third, Master of the Horse has finished on in company. There with Rip Van Winkle and Golden Sword.
gap then to Debussy, who was further back in the field with eight of Aquarius. Ah, sure, it's terrific. It's a, it's a great relief. Uh, you daren't uh, dream that it might happen. You know, it's when you see all the, actually the very good horses who didn't quite pull it off, uh, some great ones, in fact. Uh, you, you know, you realise it's not something you can take for granted or expect. But um, you know, we, we always love the horse, and uh, he, he he's always given us a special feeling. And Mick has always been very sweet on this horse. He's really liked him all along. Of course, having ridden Galileo, his brother. Uh, you know, gave him a special interest in him as well when he started riding him work. And uh, he rides him himself, or Fran Berry ride him in, in all his work. And uh, uh, you know, he loves the horse, and uh, uh, I think it uh, meant a lot to him. At Sandown Park for the 2009 Coral Eclipse, and away they go. Rip Van Winkle just the last to leave the stalls. Lang Shining pressing on, set sail, as well as Malibu Bay. The pacemakers are one, two, and three. See the stars sits in fourth. The yellow jacket Mick Kinnear. Skill Tang goes out wide at Duke Bond's jury, followed by twice over and Rip Van Winkle. Then Seema de Triomphe and Conduit is at the rear of the field, and it's Conduit's stable companion, Lang Shining, in the hands of Richard Hughes that sets a pretty fast pace in the early stages, followed by one of the two Valley Door pacemakers set sail in second. They've probably gone off too quickly. The others are, are languishing behind. Back in third is Malibu Bay, about six lengths off the front pair. Steel Tango is fourth, followed by the Guineas and Derby winner. See the stars in fifth place. Then Jukebox Jury towards the outside then of Rip Van Winkle in the dark blue. The pink cap of twice over. Seema de Triomphe is second last, and still Ryan Moore waits at the back aboard Conduit. See the stars having gone off the seven to four on favourite. They're into the turn already, and it's blistering fractions from Lang Shining and Set Sail. They're five lengths clear of Malibu Bay. Then another five or six back to Steel Tango. See the stars on the inside, then from Jukebox Jury there. The Yellow Jacket, see the stars, followed by Rip Van Winkle. Jimmy Fortune in the dark blue, stalking the favourite. Seema to Triumph further back, twice over, pushed along and conduit. And now the pacemakers are likely to come back to the field, and they're going to start stopping in front. They're inside the three, Lang Shining set sail, Malibu Bay, the principal's pulling wide sensibly. Here comes See the Stars in the hands of Mick Canet, and he's going to have to commit pretty early here as they run down inside the two. See the Stars chased now by Rip Van Winkle, and here's Conduit the stair out wide under Ryan Moore unleashing his run. See the Stars will have to dig in. Rip Van Winkle, his old rival, is closing up on the Guineas and Derby winner inside the final furlong. See the Stars by half a length to Rip Van Winkle. He's beating off. Rip Van Winkle, they race up to the line, see the stars, this shining star, see the stars wins the eclipse from Rip Van Winkle, who gave it a great shout in third conduit, followed by Seema de Triumph, Steel Tango, Duke's Bronx Jury, then twice over. We'll have to see how he comes out of it now, and he'll tell us what whether we should uh, run him once before the... I, I can't see him running in two races before the Chantley Stakes. I think we'll have to miss one of them. Uh, so we'll have to decide now what to, what to do. And away they go for the 2009 Judmont International. Master craftsman to the outside of the dark blue jacketed George Bernard Shaw. The white cap out wide is set sail and the pacemakers go on one and two. Johnny Murta sitting ahead of Mick Canan. See the stars at the back of the field in these early stages. So Mick Canan will have them all in his sights here on the odds-on favourite as they race down the back straight here at York. And it's George Bernard Shaw setting what looks to be a pretty generous pace over set sail in second place. Two and a half lengths back to Master Craftsman, who's up in distance today in third. And then the Guineas Derby and Eclipse winner, See the Stars in the yellow jacket, Christopher Shaw's colours at the back of the field looking for this big four-timer as they race towards the far turn and still George Bernard Shaw and Colmo Donoghue leading over Shamey Heffernan on set sail. See the stars, the fourth one on favourite, about seven lengths off the leader at the moment, but apparently travelling well, as you would hope, as they race towards the final five furlongs. They're on the turn in here, and see the stars remains in last place in the hands of Mick Kinnear. George Bernard Shaw and set sail. They've set the pace. Master Craftsman lays two and a half lengths back in third. See the stars is just on 
on his heels. He's just watching Murta's every move here, Mick Kinnan. Uh, Murta going for a gap between his pacemakers on Master Craftsman, who's going to take it up with about uh, just under three furlongs left to travel. See the stars come through between them as well and is absolutely cantering. Murta gets to work. He says, go on Master Craftsman. Can he shake off? See the stars. Mick Kinnan begins to push away in second place on the Derby winner. There's a length and a half between them. They race down to the final furlong. Master Craftsman see the stars now challenging on the near side. The gap down to half a length. And Nick, see the stars beginning to get up on the near side. Oh, every inch a champion and a fabulous four-timer. See the stars wins the Jutpont International over Master Craftsman. Miles clear of set sail in third. And George Bernard Shaw, last of the four. Keeps winning and uh, keeps doing an off. And Mick always says he, he'll never win any race by much more than a length. And there he is. Look, at he's done the same again. You know, but as long as he keeps winning, we won't we won't worry. Mera and Grand Ducal on the inside, Lock Long on the outer, Master Craftsman between them. Then see the stars being ridden up on the outside of the leaders to pick up the running now is Set Sail. So Set Sail takes over and goes a couple of lengths in front of Master Craftsman. Then comes Rockhampton racing up on the outside. Grand Ducal is fourth. They're followed by Lock Long and See the Stars, a break then to Fame and Glory, Casual Conquest and Lord Admiral. So up front it is in the inside, set sail, Joseph O'Brien, taken on by Rockhampton, Sean Levy, who now takes over to pick it up from set sail. They've gone five, six in front. Master Craftsman is third, Grand Ducal is next. Lock Long and see the stars race together. Just over two lengths to fame and glory. Lord Admiral and casual conquest heading now up towards the five mark. And set sail has regained the initiative on the inside for Joseph O'Brien to just head. Rockhampton, Sean Levy, they're well clear. Master Craftsman is running third, Jamie Heffernan. Head fourth is Grand Ducal. Tracking that quartet, then see the stars. Lock Long, fame and glory, Lord Admiral. And then casual conquest. But it is set sail who's six lengths in front. Rockhampton, Master Craftsman. Craftsman Grand Ducal, they're being followed by Fame and Glory now who races up on the outside of Sea the Stars and as they race now on the approach to the straight, Set Sail is the leader from Master Craftsman, Fame and Glory is now tracked by Sea the Stars and Fame and Glory has raced up to join Master Craftsman being chased by Sea the Stars in third, they are clear, it's Fame and Glory, Johnny Murth in front, Sea the Stars and Nick Kinnan ranging up on the near side and Sea the Stars they come to see a star, and it's see the stars who hits the front for Michael Kinnan and John Ox, and racing up towards the finish, the undisputed champion, see the stars, is running away. He's got a score by two and a half lengths. Princess fifth, group one, fame and glory second, master crossman third, clear of Grand Ducal in fourth. The guineas in the derby, you know, that was always for me growing up, that was the holy grail. If you had a, a horse who could win the guineas and then a month later, four weeks later, win the derby, 50% longer distance, completely different track, um, that there, that was it, you know. So when he, when he did the two, we knew, we didn't say it at the time, you know, there's no point saying, oh, this is one of the greats, when he's just, just won. He, he was too smart to uh, win by too far, you know, but, um, um, yeah, that was uh, that was him. He always had a lot left in the tank. Uh, I think Aidan had this idea that uh, uh, you know we'll have to get try and get this horse off the bridle. We'll have to make the pace as fast as we can. But that suited us perfectly. You couldn't get see the stars off the bridle. No horse could. He was such a special horse, and uh, and you just kept. Pinching yourself and saying, God, you know, I'm lucky to have this fellow. And it's such a, of course, such a, a responsibility to have him too, that, that nothing, you know, you'd want to avoid anything going wrong.